Well, I asked if y'all wanted a video on restraints and y'all said yes. So, I upped the ante and I present to you restraints and a posture collar because Penguin After Dark's all about being extra. You heard? This is a restraint or really cool uh, bracelet to uh, finish off your goth aesthetic. Got a ring here, that way you can use it for binding. This part is the cuff and then this is the restraint. The cuff is wider than the restraint to help offset the pressure that's created from it. You can damage the wrist because they're arteries, tendons. You can create permanent damage, which loss of feeling in your hands, tingling, numbness. You don't want to be losing feeling in your hands because that would just kind of suck. You know what I mean? We start off with some veg tan and then this guy, which is a strap cutter. Basically take it and set it to whatever width you want your your strap to be cut at and then you pull it through like this You can use a straight edge, but this makes it a lot easier and it's a lot more uniform Definitely a way to step up your game when making anything belts collars restraint Once you have your straps, you need to cut them to length the total length of this restraint is 12 inches from this point to this point. But you have to make the strap two inches longer so you can wrap it through the buckle. So I make the strap at 14 inches. Then I'll find the center line of it to mark out all the buckle holes. And to help me establish this cutout. And then you need to punch out all the holes. And there are a lot of those. This guy, to make this one, I'll punch the beginning and the end of it and then take a razor to kind of cut it out. They do sell a, a stamp for it, but things like 40 bucks. Holy calamity. If I were making these things like consistently like all the time, then it would justify something like that. But at this point, uh, a box cutter will do just fine. After we bevel the edges, which give a nice little bit of a rounded off edge, then we'll go ahead and take this razor. It's, I think it's a skiving knife. I'm not 100% sure what it's called, but what it does is it shaves off material to make it thinner, which helps on this wrap over. And if you didn't, it, it's like, it'd be super bulky right in here. And then we break out the uh, strap cutter again and we're gonna make the cuffs. We just make them a little bit wider and make these things at 11 inches, but there's no need to do extra material since they are what they are. Now we get to make the posture collar. A posture collar is what the name implies. So when you have it on, you remain in a, this posture. You cannot turn your head too much or look up or down. It's straight forward. Several years ago, I had made this one for Miss Penguin. This was in the beginning of my leatherworking journey. So, it's very primitive to say the least. And I had made a template for it. If you're going into leatherworking and you design a template for anything you make, keep 
the template. You can always modify it later and come back to it. That way you don't have to figure out all the garbage again. It was too wide or too tall, even for her. It's kind of too tall for myself. So I took the template and now I've modified it to change it down to make these guys. I also got rid of the buckle on the back for a couple reasons. If you're ever in a situation and the thing needs to come off, trying to undo the buckle can be kind of a, a pain and can be a safety hazard. So what we're doing is corset style to where you'll end up lacing it in the back. That way if there's ever a situation, it's easier to cut it and get the thing off. And then also because trying to make that strap and buckle uh, a little bit more universal can be, it, it can be a headache. Anyone that makes collars and the such will know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're making something specifically for someone and you know their specific neck size, it's not an issue. But when you're trying to make products or something that's for a customer that you can't measure their neck, it's it, it can be difficult to make sure that you get the right size i'm taking the template and i'm making new ones and what you'll probably end up seeing here is i'm making three of these at uh at once for the event we did in colorado one was for was a pre-order for a customer and then the other two we took to sell yeah we sold both of them so now i'm actually making more of them to have for inventory and stuff so now i'm staining them or dyeing them is there a difference between the two words i don't fucking know anyways the way i do it is i will dye them black first let that dry then i will go in and bevel the edges again then I will do the color that I'm gonna use. That pre-order was red, and then I'm gonna do a red one and a purple one to take to the event. But after I've beveled the edges, then I'll go back in and dye the color that I want to be. And it gives a pretty cool effect. And then once that cures, then I put a super sheen on it, which gives it that glossy look. Ooh. I've been wearing glasses for a couple of months now and uh, 43 years of life and I never wore glasses. So I started wearing them a couple of months ago and now this looks really weird to me without this. So this is my new normal, just so you know. Adapt, overcome, change, whatever. <laughs> When you have leather, you have the face. This is the side of the leather that you tool, you dye, stain, paint, whatever. And then this side is the flesh. See how it's pretty rough and nasty. Some veg tans are a lot worse than this one. So what you do is you put a liner on it. And I used uh, pigskin because it's thin enough for when I have to use the eyelids. The, the eyelets can fit through this veg tan and through it. I don't have a sewing machine and I don't have the patience for hand stitching. So what I do is I use a contact cement to, con to put the two of them together and then I use eyelets to reinforce holding them all down. And then where the these little pieces that hold on the D-rings those are a, a type of rivet also. I have a press that holds them down, or it, which is a lot better than uh, doing the hammer and anvil setup, which is how I started. But as I progressed, I've gotten to a point where I can start kind of upgrading equipment and having the press makes life a hell of a lot easier. Don't just take my word for it. I'm not only a customer, but the owner of the machine, so. And now, all that's left is to lace up the back, 
throw on some stainless steel chain to uh, bind it all together and give it to the world. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, until next time. See ya! It's hot out here, so I gotta wipe off any sweat. That may happen. That way I don't look like a, fuck I don't know. Mm -hmm. And now, <clears throat> and now we get, oh, got it this time, it's coming this time. And now we get to make the posture collar. Several years ago I had